Bad news for the ABC today. There will be limited coverage of Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull's visit to Nauru later this year, with the Pacific Nation banning the ABC from entering the country. The Nauruan government says it will not grant visas to ABC employees, accusing the national broadcaster of biased reporting and political interference. A what? Come on, Nauru! Not being invited to something hurts! Whether it's the Pacific Islands Forum or Ben Stevens' after party for the Year 10 formal. Come on, Ben! You had like a hundred people there. You told me it was cancelled! <laughs> anyway, that's all in the past now. Uh, the Nauruan government said that the ban was due to the biased and false reporting from the ABC about Nauru. ABC bias? What's your angle here, Nauru? Are you trying to get a job at the Australian? God! <laughs> Now, Nauru does seem uh, have to have some cause to be a little bit shirty at Auntie. Just last week, the ABC had to issue an apology for a 2016 late-line piece about the Nauruan Justice Minister. But the ABC did not have to apologise for this 2016 piece about Nauru's lost wealth, which detailed, and I really do have to stress that this is absolutely true, the Nauruan government lost a ton of money in the 90s investing in a West End musical about the life and times of Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> and that musical was written by one of Nauru's financial advisors. <laughs> Come on, people, it's a musical about watching paint dry written by a financial advisor. How was it not a hit? <laughs> Here's one of the songs. I'm Leonardo da Vinci <laughs> and I'm painting the Mona Lisa inventing a helicopter. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. <laughs> anyway, the point is, this is a national broadcaster being denied entry into a country that is hosting an event with our Prime Minister there. That's an outrage. When another country tries to tell our press what to it can and can't do, well, my friends, that is when our top dog goes in to bat for us. Well, it, we, clearly, we, re, you know, we regret... We'll, it'll be regrettable if the ABC <laughs> is not there. Thanks, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Well, screw you, Nauru. We didn't even want to go to your stupid thing anyway. <laughs> didn't even want to go to Ben's party. Who gives a shit? <laughs> and we don't even... You don't even need to send the ABC to go cover Malcolm Turnbull walking around Nauru. We already know what that's going to look like. <laughs> Hello, everyone. There, everyone good? How's it all going? Honestly, there's never been a more exciting time to be indefinitely detained. That's what I say. <laughs> Oh, my, you're quite small, aren't you? Oh, you're a child, I see. Don't look good. Oh, I love these ocean views. Reminds me of Point Piper. Fantastic. Well, I'm off home, unlike you. Goodbye. <laughs> Just thought that might be how it would go. <laughs> a lot of sports news to unpack. You know what that means, everyone? Time for our Logie Award-winning sports segment. It's Cup This! <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> now, usually in this beloved segment, we cover World Cups of the football variety, but tonight, something else. A wild brawl has erupted during Australia's Basketball World Cup qualifier against the Philippines. A shove on Chris That's Golding great. was all it took to kick things off. Back the other way is... It's all happening now. Oh! And this has got wild. The scuffle has been called one of the ugliest moments in Australian sporting history. Bloody hell, the Aussies are punching on! <laughs> I haven't seen boomers this angry since there were moves to dump negative gearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> Personally, I've never seen anything like this on a basketball court. Also, I have never watched basketball. <laughs> I've never watched basketball. Even I know that this is weird. As the fighting stopped, the referees were left to work out who was to blame, while the Filipino team took selfies. Oh, my God! <laughs> selfies! Just bashed an Australian! <laughs> in Soccer World Cup news, it's getting down to the pointy end of the tournament over in Russia. Big game tonight between England and Colombia. Here at Tonightly, we've been more excited by the great work of Achilles the Cat, everyone! <laughs> Oh! Russian-born psychic cat who has pre correctly predicted the result of every single World Cup pool match in the 2018 World Cup. Every single match, everybody! How about that? That's pretty good! That is, until a few days ago, Achilles the Cat incorrectly predicted that Nigeria would beat Argentina 
but there's no reason to be alarmed, as this Russian man explains. He made a mistake two days ago, but that happens. He is a cat. <laughs> he is a cat, everyone. <laughs> you gotta take it easy, because he's a cat. He doesn't know how the offside rule works. Fuck, I don't know how the offside rule works. And I'm not a cat. <laughs> this year, there are heaps of animals taking a punt. Davey the Quokka is at it again. This time he's predicted the Socceroos and France will make it through Group C to the World Cup Finals in Russia. The latest in a long line of psychic animals has some good news with this goat predicting a draw for the Socceroos in the upcoming World Cup match. Tune in German World Cup fans can breathe a sigh of relief after a polar bear oracle predicted a victory for the team. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry. Sadly, not all animals are loving their newfound celebrity status as soccer psychics. In Japan, Rabiot the Octopus correctly predicted all three of Japan's pool matches and things were going swimmingly until news broke today that despite Rabiot's mad World Cup predictive skills, the eight-armed oracle has been chopped up and eaten! <laughs> It was an open basket funeral, and um, <laughs> rest in pieces. Uh, <laughs> Rabbit the octopus, you sweet, tender, deep fried bar snack. Oh, <laughs> delicious, it was so young. Jokes aside, here at Tonightly, we've actually been putting together our own team of psychic animals to work on the World Cup. Um, I've got to be honest, it's been mixed results. Uh, Bessie the Sheep was our best performer. I loved Bessie. She was fantastic. Correctly predicted Australia's loss to France and the draw with Denmark. Uh, unfortunately, however, she did luck out on the Australia-Peru match, so we did have to let her go, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> yeah, you didn't predict that, did you, fuckers? Um, <laughs> I think we also had Frank the Cow here as well. Uh, no good. That's uh, Kathy the Chicken as well. Sammy the Spatchcock as <laughs> well, uh, which all looks delicious. And of course, you know, um, <coughs> Terry the Rat. Uh, <laughs> Terry the Rat, everyone. Rest in peace. Thanks for playing. Let's cut this. <laughs>